since 2003. This is the Sports Source, East Tennessee's number one sports talk show. Presented by Junkie Gone, Phoenix Conversions. With your host, John Pennington. The Sports Source starts now. Good Sunday morning and welcome into the Sports Source. We appreciate you being with us. Uh, you know, for 17 years I've said thanks for joining us, but certainly in these crazy times, um, we do appreciate you tuning in. We appreciate you supporting our sponsors and hopefully we can provide you with a little bit of a, a break from the uh, the stuff you normally see coming out of your television these, these last few weeks. Uh, we have a uh, packed show today. Let me go ahead and show you what we got coming up. We're going to talk about uh, what the SEC and other conference commissioners are saying about football plans. Uh, VFL Will Overstreet is going to join us to talk about Tennessee's draft hopefuls and some other things. Ranking UT's draft prospects. UT, what was UT's best ever draft class? You want to talk about the glory days. We'll relive some of that. Should UT add another quarterback if it can? I'm amazed we're talking about this. Wonderlick scores for pass ball quarterbacks. That always leaks, and I've done a little research. Do the Wonderlick scores mean anything anyway? And then best one-game performance by a Vol in our Hindsight 2020 series. We'll tell you what we think that is. This first segment of our program is brought to you by Phoenix Conversions. And right now, they are doing business, but only by appointment. So if you need your vehicle or fleet of vehicles upgraded, call 670-4060. 670-4060. To set up an appointment, uh, or you can visit them on Facebook for more information, and you see their website, phoenixconversions.com, right there. Good local company. They've been doing this since 1987, <coughs> and I think the last time my hair was this long was 1987, <laughs> much to my father's chagrin back then. I uh, want to welcome in the first two members of today's panel. We have right here Josh Ward from WNML. Thank you, Josh. Thanks, John. Noon to 3, Monday through Friday. That's right. We're keeping it going. And your podcast? Locked on balls, uh, still there for you every day too. Uh, that's that is yeoman's <laughs> work to be doing a daily podcast. It's been a, it's been a while since we've had a game to talk about. But we're, we're still at, talking. At some point, that's got to be cut back to like three times a week or something. But I'm impressed. And right down there, we got David Ubbin from the Athletic. David, thank you for joining us. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, first segment here. Let's start with the latest from SEC Commissioner Greg Sankey. He was on with uh, Jimmy Himes and John Wilkerson on Sports Talk this week. They are doing a great job with interview after interview right now. Um, but I wanted to talk about what he had to say about the SEC's plans. And uh, he's being both honest and vague, which I think is honest at the moment. But let's go ahead and show you what he had to say about timelines. The beauty of April 17th is I don't have to answer that question right now. I think one of the great learning experiences that I've enjoyed, if there's such a thing as enjoying the last 30 days, is how much we've learned over that period of time. As we've talked to researchers and positions, their encouragement has been that we've learned a lot, we will learn a lot, and we should wait to make major decisions. I've avoided the hypotheticals and tried to prepare for what's in front of me right now. Okay, he danced around the question. So another thing I thought was interesting, though, he was talking about, well, well let me read the quote. If you look back when we were deciding how to approach basketball tournaments, each of those decisions was an independent decision by a conference. You saw the Ivy League make a decision on a Tuesday. We made a decision to cancel our event based on new information on Thursday morning. There's probably a lesson or example in the fact that we are independent entities. Part of, that, part of what's now happened since that time is there's a lot of conversation, certainly among the autonomy conferences, basically the Power Five, uh, that the preference, preference would be to go down a road together. The NCAA has a football oversight committee. They have others in th that are thinking about this. Now, if there's one small niche that's inactive, but perhaps the Southeastern Conference and others are able to function, that's one of those hypotheticals we don't have to answer right now, but you'd think there'd be a bit of room in that decision making. Just being a couple of weeks ago on this show, we talked about the fact that we thought Greg Sankey should probably be putting all, all the cards on the table, looking at any possibility, and one of them was put the SEC first. If you can do something without the other guys, do it, make your money. Sounds like if for example, the Pac-12 isn't going to be ready to play, the SEC, ACC, and Big Ten may go right ahead, or whoever. It sounds like by pushing the independence, it sounds like the SEC is ready to go it alone if it can. No word on what would happen if some SEC schools are open and some aren't, but your thoughts on what he said, either on the, the vague answer on the timelines or his comment on the SEC being willing to go it alone, perhaps. 
Yeah, I think that last part shows that he is examining the hypotheticals. It's just the hypotheticals privately, and he's not going to talk about them publicly, which is probably the right move. I would at least want an ally. Uh, I would not want to be the SEC's playing football and nobody else's, but as you mentioned, I could see the Big Ten or the ACC uh, as an ally. But uh, another challenge will just be the, this broad uh, geographic range that you're having to put together from Texas to South Carolina down to Florida to have all of those states that would be in line to be able to play football if that's what you try to do. And it also impacts another thing we talked about, and that is if you have some areas that aren't playing football, that's going to nuke some of your non-conference games. I still think when all is said and done, you're going to have a shortened season that is probably conference only. Uh, when that starts, I don't know, but that would be my guess at the moment because if, you've, if you try and go it that way, well, we'll just play without the Pac-12. Well, schools have non-conference games against the Pac-12, so I, I just wonder if you just drop a game or – you just focus on conferences, and I guess that's where they'll go. David. Yeah, that may be a case-by-case -case basis, but, I mean, you're already seeing, you know, the difference in how states are handling this, even, you know, regardless of, of how their state is doing with, with sort of combating the virus. And, of course, you, know, you look at, you mentioned, you know, California, their, their governor, Gavin Newsom, they're locking down. It doesn't sound like they're going to be doing anything. And so... For the end of the year. Yeah, actually, yeah. the end of the no year. And so you're going to have to, yeah. you're going to have to sort of sit and, and figure that out state by state. Um, I definitely think it is possible, but uh, to, to play every, every, you know, play just your conference games and then your non-conference maybe a case-by-case -case basis you know based on each school because those games are kind of independent and don't really uh, impact the SEC but you know there again you know I think Sankey's handled this pretty well there's just so many variables and so many unknowns that there's only so much you can say but there's about 500 things you got to prepare for yeah I mean you had uh, oh, what's his name is it Gil Garcetti or Eric Garcetti the mayor of LA his father was the OJ Simpson top cop I guess that was Gil Garcetti so it's Eric Garcetti I think mayor of LA said he doesn't see any sporting events in the city of Los Angeles until 2021 okay then you got Florida which had their biggest day in deaths and opened up the beaches on the same day. Mm -hmm. So uh, trying to project which states do what is going to be difficult. I, it'll be interesting to see inside the SEC. Nashville's been hit, Nashville's been hit pretty hard in, in, in the state of Tennessee. Do they have a different take? Plus it's a private school, smaller school. Mm -hmm. How does that play versus the other schools in the SEC? And then Kentucky. I thought it was interesting this week. Their governor has been kind of on the front of all this stuff. He was doing things a week before we did them here. They announced this week, the state of Kentucky, that they are working with six Midwestern states in terms of finding a way to open up. Not states to the south. Yeah, from He's a sports working, standpoint, working more with Big Ten country than SEC country. Yes, so you wonder, okay, uh, are they going to be a little bit more tight on when they can open up those campuses? So th that's the, to me, getting the campuses open is so key, and it's going to be interesting to see if you can get all of your league mates open. Yeah, and it's, you can't really get creative with this stuff, too. You know, you talk about pro sports, you know, well, there's no many, many games in L.A., but those are private entities. So if you're the Rams, you're the Chargers, well, come to San Antonio and play games for a year and, and run your business there, and that's, that's easy there. They can do that. Yeah. Colleges... There you're so wrapped up in the state economy and in, in state legislatures and, and all those things, like you can't really get creative. It, it, it looks like, you know, based on what they, you know, they said, is it sounds like it's, you know, going to be based on what's going on on campus. You've also got, yeah, and we'll get to that in a second mm -hmm. because many of the conference commissioners came out this week and talked about will, will we play if there aren't students on campus? I know a lot of people are saying, well, just play without the students there. Doesn't sound like that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll bring that. They were pretty forceful about that comment. The, the interesting thing about the college stuff is you've also got the travel. You know, if Major League Baseball puts all of its teams in Arizona, okay, but University of Tennessee charters a plane. University of Alabama, they charter a plane. Who was on that plane before you? How clean is that plane? I mean, nobody's flying right now, so the travel is an issue. Uh, There's just so many variables. I, I read something this week. Uh, this is just soccer, but it, they were trying to break down, okay, how many people would have to be at an English Premier League soccer game if it's, it's just the 22 guys, it's just the 11 guys on the field, <laughs> the backups and the coaches and the, the match officials. No, it would be between two and 300 people per game for soccer. Mm -hmm. Now imagine how many people it would take for an SEC football game. So it's, I think they'll jump through all the hoops. I don't think there's any doubt it's coming back at some point. I think once the dominoes start falling, we'll go hoops and dominoes. Once the dominoes <laughs> start falling, I think it'll start to go fast. But 
there are going to be a lot of dominoes to fall before you get it back. But, and it still starts with the pro leagues, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and the PGA Tour is going to try to come back in June uh, without news. spectators. Uh, and that is good news. It, it is a more socially distanced sport, which helps. Uh, you still have travel included. But uh, you're right. I mean, it, there are the, the hypotheticals, the variables, and the layers from we can have the, the political conversation from governors, city, county mayors, uh, and then presidents. And so we can talk about what conference commissioners say, but what do presidents of the universities within the conferences say? That's a, a huge part of this conversation as well. Oh, when it comes to the University of Tennessee, you've got, I mean, it's in Knoxville, it's mm -hmm. in Knox County, it's in the state of Tennessee. That's three different political folks above you. Then you have your own board to deal with, plus chancellor, president, et cetera, et cetera. It's going to be interesting to watch this play out. But again, the positive is you're starting to talk about it, people are starting to talk about what happens on the other side of that tunnel. About a month ago, it was just, oh gosh, how have we shut all this down? Now you're starting to look at plans moving forward. So I think that's a positive. It's positive for my psyche, I can tell you that. <laughs> when we come back, uh, we'll have plenty of stuff on UT to come, but we get the news out of the way first. And next, we're going to talk about uh, the loss of revenue. It's starting to have an impact. Schools and conferences are starting to react. We'll tell you how. Come on back on the Sports Source.